YouTube family, I hope you are all doing stupendously and welcome back to another episode of Cassar Industries where today we are going to try and finish the Commodore wagon that we started in the last video. So let's roll it inside, get it on the hoist and get into it. First job of today is I'm going to change this battery. I had that battery on charge for about two and a half days and I barely had enough power to turn the accessories on so that battery is completely cooked. So I just went down to the local parts store yesterday afternoon and picked up this guy, Supercharged. It's not normally the batteries I use. I like to use the Century flavors normally. Um, but anyway, this was cheap and it was on special. So we'll throw that in and it's gonna be quite a heck of a lot better anyway. So we'll just swap that over real quick. Once we do that, we'll jump inside the car and plug the scanner in uh, and we'll just scan for codes and stuff because uh, I haven't scanned it since I redid all that wiring. Um, and the engine light was on on this thing, which I'm tipping was caused by that. So haven't actually scanned this car at all yet. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll put the battery in and then we'll scan it. All right, new battery is in, beautiful. I've just plugged the scanner in and scanned it. And this is what we have. We've got a knock sensor fault and a PCS current. So we are just gonna go through and clear those out. That's in the engine side of things anyway. Then we'll go into transmission. We'll just go through and check everything. There's nothing in transmission. It's great. Let's go into airbags now. With the outside airbags. Codes. Current codes. Nothing. History codes. Nothing. Beautiful, so she is all clear of codes. Sweet as, so that is all good now. We've got no codes in the thing. The car starts first shot now, which is really, really good. Um, so you're happy that we've got that sorted. So next thing we're gonna go on to, uh, in the last video, we did a lot of the service items, but uh, we couldn't finish it just because there was a couple of filters that we were missing. All that's left basically is to change the air filter and do an engine oil and all filter on it. So I haven't actually pulled the air filter out of this thing yet. I do have a new one sitting there ready to go. So we'll explore this together. Just do all these clips around the outside. Yuck. Yeah, that's definitely pretty bad. One thing you can do to check filters, you can just hold them up to the light. And if you can see lights from them, you know that they're still not too bad. Yeah, there's nothing happening with that one. There's a bit of a comparison, old versus new. But I've also got a bit of um, crap in this airbox as well. So I'm just gonna vacuum out this airbox and uh, slap that new filter in, and then we'll lift it up and do the oil. I've just got the thing warming up a bit before I change the oil, just get a little bit of heat into the oil before I dump it. This oil is very old, as I said in the previous video, it's about 20,000 kgs overdue for a service, so I want to try and warm it up and thin it out a bit. But as you can hear, it's got a bit of belt squeak as well. Uh, the belt doesn't have any cracks in it, but it looks like the belt is dried out, so I'm going to order a new belt for it as well. Radio, old oil filter off. New one ready to go. All right, old oil filter is off. New oil filter is on. That oil filter was super loose, by the way. I've seen some loose oil filters in my time, but yeah, this was ridiculous. And it was quite wet under the filter, even though I recently pressure washed the engine bay on this thing. Next thing we're gonna do is just dump the oil. I've already cracked the sun plug. Yucky. Sweet, oil is done, sun plug is back in, new sun plug washer. Please people, replace your sun plug washers. It's so cheap and easy. All right, so here's our old oil. We'll transfer that into there. We'll drop it down and put some new stuff in it. I'm gonna use some Penrite Vantage 1540 semi-synthetic. All right, fresh oil going in. As I said, I'm using a 1540 semi-synthetic by Penrite. These Uncotex will pretty much run on any oil, 
1030, 1540, 2050, mineral, semi-synthetic, full synthetic, canola, maybe not. But if you want to try it and it works, let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, with this amount of Ks, I'd normally run about a 1540. The higher the Ks, sort of the thicker you want to step it up to. Perfect. All right, I've just moved the car out the back here because it is now eight o'clock in the morning and I'm about to have retail work sort of rocking up that I need to get ready for. So I've pulled the serpentine belt off as you can see and I'm checking these two pulleys here. This one's a bit noisy. As you can hear that. This one is stiff to turn, but not noisy, but does have a bit of play in it. So I've ordered two new idler pulleys as well. The tensioner pulley is actually okay. So we'll throw two new idler pulleys on it and a new belt. Sweet as guys, that's all back together. Got a couple of new pulleys on there and a new belt, put a Deco belt on it. One thing I will say about these pulleys, if you do need to change them, I use these tech part pulleys. And the reason why is from factory, this pulley is metal, this one is plastic. A lot of the replacement ones are still plastic, but the tech part ones re replaces that with a steel one as well. So you both go to metal ones. So now we'll just make sure there's no squeaks when we start them up. Beautiful. Quiet as a mouse. Happy days. Rightio, we've got old mate back up on the hoist. The next thing we are going to do is diff cradle bushes. I hope you've seen me do this in other videos before. Uh, these ones are also flogged, so if I'll pry up on there, you can sort of see the whole thing's moving up and down. They like to tear the centers out of the bushes. So we're going to replace them on both sides and pedders to the rescue. As always, I love pedder suspension components. We're going to put some nolothane uh, bushes in instead. So we'll just knock this out really quick. Again, do them side by side. It's just a matter of undoing that middle bolt, which is always extremely tight, and then undoing these three out as any pry the bush out, slip the new one in. Let's get it done. Okie dokie, they're both done. Both sides. That's another job ticked off the list. We're getting to the pointy end of this car now. There's not a heck of a lot left. Uh, next thing I wanna do is pull the front wheels off uh, cause I need to change the sway bar link bushes. As you can see, they're a bit worse for wear. Uh, again, going with Pedder's bushes for them. Uh, the car has Kumo tyres on it, which are all in pretty good condition. So they've all got quite a bit of tread left, probably about 80% tread left. However, um, this one is actually the spare. This is not a Kumo. This is a Centara. Uh, and this one is a bit dry rotted. It's a bit hard to see, but it's got cracks and stuff through the tread. So. Um, the wheel that was on here, the Kumo tie that was on here, he actually drove over a star picket and put it through the sidewall. So it's actually got a big hole in the sidewall. So the Kumo tie that was on the left front is stuffed and this Centara, which is the spare, isn't great. So what I'm gonna do is put this Kumo tire to the spare and then put two new tires on the front. So I'll buzz the wheel, the front wheels off. Um, I'll take this wheel and the one that's currently in the spare with a hole in the sidewall down to the tire shop to get some new tires fitted. And I'll knock out these sway bar link bushes as well. All right, so I got the front wheels off. Uh, one thing I've just noticed, which I didn't notice before, this is the driver side. Uh, these rubbers are actually okay. If you have a look at the washers uh, that are, are on the sway bar link rubbers, you'll see that they're concaved inwards. And that's the way that they're supposed to be. But if you have a look at the driver side, uh, sorry, the passenger side one, the top one is fine, but the bottom one is um, spun around the wrong way and that's actually causing it to cut into the rubber. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and replace all eight of them with some Pedders, not the plain ones. Uh, and the kit also comes with the new washers as well. So we'll just go through and slap all of this on. It's just a matter of undoing the top nut both sides, so you undo both of them and then you can actually pivot the uh, sway bar down to get the rubbers out. Sweet as, they're both done on both sides. And as you can see, the washers are the cor correct way around with the concave going inwards. I know that that looks like, like it's not right because if you look at, here's the old rubbers. 
if you look at the rubber like that and if you sit the washer on there that way it looks like it cups it quite well and that's sort of how it's supposed to go but it is incorrect they are actually supposed to go that way so this is one that we took out of the passenger side and you can actually see how chewed and destroyed this rubber is and that's because when you put the washer like that and you go around corners and it leans on it the edge of the washer cuts into the bush and just ends up tearing it to shreds so that's that i just wanted to show you that so now the next thing to do is we're going to put this tire or this wheel on the back of des the other wheel that we need is ready down at the tire shop so we'll get a couple of new tires fitted and that one can go to the spare and then this thing is pretty much done well things really are not going to plan today it's all of five maybe ten minutes later i've dropped the thing down i'm going to park it outside and it doesn't want to start I've plugged my scanner in and scanned it and it's throwing a code for the crank angle sensor which is weird because we scanned it this morning and cleared all the codes out of it. We started the car, ran it for a while, re-scanned it, everything was fine and now just a couple of hours later it's, it's doing this. So um, a way that you can check if it is a crank angle sensor, uh, if you don't have a scanner, if the car doesn't want to start, is you can just get some water. The crank angle sensor sort of lives just down here. I've actually just done this and it did it, so hopefully it does it again. If you just, it's probably too much. Um, but if you just sort of do that and try and start the car, it should start and run for a few seconds and then shut itself off. Yeah, there you go, she fired straight up. And just like that. It's just like someone's hitting the key and it's turning itself off. So that's a surefire way to test if it is the crank angle sensor on these things playing up. So, um, I do actually keep these in stock. I've actually dug one out of stock. So here's a brand new crank angle sensor. This is a Goss one. Uh, and I've also got a front crank seal. I always change the crank seal when I do the sensor, which sits in behind the harmonic balancer. You have seen me do these before, but it's basically uh, intake duct off, upper cover off above the radiator, under your fan wiring, unclip your radiator fans, pull your radiator fans out, flick the belt off. Once the belt is off, you remove the harmonic balancer bolt. Remember to put a little bit of sealant around the head of the bolt and a little bit of Loctite on the thread when you put that back in. Get your crank angle, uh, your harmonic balancer puller tool, pull the thing off. There's a plastic cover that just clips on. Um, you unplug the crank angle sensor and pull the cover off behind there. Uh, then there's two 13 mm bolts to undo the sensor. Pop the new sensor on, pull the old seal out, knock the new seal in, reverse the process, put it all back together. They don't take too long to do it all, but what I might actually do is set up the old time lapse um, so you can actually see me do it in real time. Alright guys, here we go. I've got it cable tied to the bonnet of the car. It is currently 12.20. Let's see how long this takes to get done. Right, I've just switched to my phone for a second. It's now 12.37, so we're 17 minutes in. The GoPro was still cabled right up to the bonnet, still recording on time-lapse, but I'll edit this bit out later. So yeah, it's all apart. Um, yeah, seals off, crank angle sensors off. I've cleaned up the front edge of the sump a little bit. I've just spent the last couple of minutes uh, just cleaning and stuff as well, cleaning up the harmonic balancer. Um, they get like crud build up on the inside of the balancer here. I actually missed that spot, but it gets it all the way around the ring. So I always like to go through and clean all of that stuff off. Uh, I've got the crank bolt cleaned up as well. So we'll just put a little bit of medium strength Loctite on the thread and some sealant around the head of the bolt. So yeah, that's it basically. I'll just finish cleaning up the balancer and then we'll start banging it all back together.
All right, we are all done. It is currently 12.55, so it's taken 35 minutes. Mind you, during that time, uh, that includes taking all of my tools out and packing up all of my tools as well. So, but also in that time, I don't know if you saw at the start of the video, I uh, forgot to mention when I did that little bit where I filmed for my phone, um, I actually went to undo the crank bolt and the battery on my rattle gun was flat. And also the spare battery on my rattle gun was pretty much flat. So I stuffed around trying to get the bolt loose a little bit on that. Um, but yeah, that's it. So it doesn't actually take too long to, to get these things all apart and all back together. So now the test is to see if it all works. She fires straight up, beautiful. It actually starts a lot quicker than it did before, so I'm calling that successful job done. So, very slight change of plans. We actually now have new shoes. So, I have actually just sold this car. Um, bloke came in and had a look at it last night. Uh, he's a very good mate of mine, and he's gonna buy this for his daughter. He's got an older Commodore that's quite clapped out, uh, but these wheels were on. Uh, and these have two brand new tyres on the front and the rears are also quite good so uh, yeah we've just swapped the wheels from car to car and I actually reckon these will suit this car pretty good needs a, needs a little bit of low a little bit of low but anyway that's now tyres sorted so there you have it guys, that wraps up this red Commodore wagon project. I know it's mainly just sort of like daily vanilla stuff if you will, uh, but I just thought I'd share it with you guys and um, some of the maintenance things on these things. So yeah, now that the wheels are done, this thing is ready to go for a roadworthy in the next couple of days and then it's off to its new owner. Thank you so much for watching, I always appreciate the support. If you want to see more content, please remember to like and subscribe and hit that little bell and we will see you very shortly in the next video. Till then, take care, be safe.